everyone. This is Dr. Shi Jun Wang from Weber State University. In today's video, I am going to talk about Chopin's famous revolutionary etude, Opus 10, number 12. This is a very, very special and probably the most famous etudes or pieces uh, Chopin ever composed. The nickname revolutionary, of course, symbolize, represents this period of uh, Chopin's life when he just left his homeland, Poland, and then the Russian army invaded Poland, and this event, so-called the November Revolution, uh, happened. Um, we know that many nicknames actually uh, was popular after Chopin's death. But this one, uh, everybody referred this as the revolutionary etude during Chopin's lifetime. And he never confirmed it. Like if he was thinking about this moment or of, about the revolution when he was composing this, but he also never denied it. So probably out of all the pieces that bears a, a nickname, this is the one that has some truth to it. Okay, um, we know that Chopin left his homeland when he was 18 years old and never returned uh, because the, the because of the, the political and of course the military invasion of of Russia. But he lost much more than we can imagine uh, when the Russian army invaded. Uh, his homeland. Basically, every Polish family went bankrupt because they, they rebuilt uh, the, the economic system. Uh, Chopin's father can no longer support him financially. He has to be on his own. And that uncertainty and, of course, this anger and sadness in his uh, heart is really hard to imagine. It's overwhelming. Um, this is a piece composed in C minor. And other pieces before this one, other famous pieces in C minor, includes this grand pathetic sonata. Right? It's sad, it has a lot of tension, and also Mozart has this C minor. Uh, Sonata and he composed during his mother's death. Uh, so uh, the, the choice of the key already can tell us so much about the mood of the piece. Um, usually a C minor piece starts on a C minor, right? Uh, usually a piece starts and ends on the tonic chord. But this one, kind of like a sudden center swarm. <laughs> seventh chord and it's not even the root position dominant it's first inversion second inversion five four three five two and then it never ever even reached the root position so we can see that this is uncertainty in all the uncertainty uh, kind of feeling. Um, the technical aspect of this left hand is very similar compared to opus 10 number 4. Because we do not want the hands or the fingers to be confused of the irregular ups and downs pattern. We want them to have to head towards the same direction, like this, and here the same, if we come from the downbeat. The refraction count would be very messed up, but then if we consider grouping them from the third note, then it's all the same direction, yeah, going down. And also, 
even the left hand, the the note patterns are also different inversions of the same chord. With a passing tone, of course. To be to be uh, exact is kind of like a pagiatura, right? A dissonance on on that note. Okay. Um, here, when we reached, finally reached C minor, we can tell uh, first this heavily dotted rhythm. It's almost like opus 10 number A. But of course, this one is a much happier, much uh, just optimistic piece, but this one has a lot of tension, a lot of anger. Um, in the choice of fingering, I use one five, one five, all the way to keep the consistency of the tone color. Right? If I change to three or four, if your hand is big enough, it means it's easy to use four or five, but then uh, it's not the same weight, it doesn't create the exact the same color. And also, when he wrote a passionato, I would probably over dot a little bit just to show the intensity. Okay. Um, and of course, when we have the softer part, uh, I use one four, one five, and then I don't over dot as much because it's somewhat passive, somewhat more tender. Uh, in measure 14, 16, uh, 14, or, uh, 15, 16, we have this descending bass line. down and then the, the, the mood of the piece kind of darkens but then in measure 24, 25, 26 it went up to symbolize probably victory marking that in this case a little bit rushed or a little bit extra lorando to reach to this key of B flat. <laughs> positions. It starts first with and 
passing tone. It starts on the root position. First inversion, second inversion, and then measure 30. Also, different inversions. So I would really practice. different hand positions. And with the same direction. I think that's, uh, again, Chopin's mental trick. Uh, you, you don't, uh, he, he didn't put this, this on the downbeat, but he starts on the third note of the 16th note. Um, with these different key changes, this very chromatic uh, uh, writing, he finally reached this section of B flat 7, C7, and here he even involved, he even involved Neapolitan 6. And then finally, we went back to the uh, the original original theme or the the very beginning. Okay, and then the second time when we had the theme, he added a lot of embellishment, basically to make the rhythm more intense. Okay, measure sixty one is this pivot uh, measure that leads us to the final uh, coda. And please notice this ingenious writing of the F sharp, changing to G flat. And he used this G flat as the pivot note to modulate with the common tone theory. Right, because Not modulate to G flat major. And finally, we have this G flat major instead of this intense minor feeling. Okay, um, at the very end, Chopin put a passionato and triple forte, uh, so probably as loud as he's ever written. Um, the last two notes lead us back to C major, right? The end now uh, went to the very beginning of this set. Um, I wouldn't use pedal here, because if I use the pedal, that will soften this anger feeling. Okay, clean cut. Um, not hit the piano, but then this is probably as violent as Chopin ever gets, right? It's a very quick attack. Okay, um, it's pretty meaningful today that I've recorded all the Opus 10, both the performance and then the tutorial. Um, when I first started this series, um, it seems like a huge, impossible project, right? all 24 etudes. I didn't know if I could make it. I didn't know if it's possible to finish this during my summer vacation. But then now I've completed half of it, kind of like running marathon, right? If I've already run half, then I have the determination to finish it. So today I'm pretty happy that um, Next week I will be practicing the, the first piece of, where I will be uh, recording the first piece of the next set and that will mark me, mark more than 50% of this project done. And I want to thank you for your support and thank you for listening to my tutorial. Please feel free to ask any questions or to give me suggestions or to start a discussion on this amazing set of piano etudes. I will see you guys 
next week. Thank you for watching.